Hello and welcome to the PyTorch Ecosystem Day 2021. Thank you very much for joining. My name is Piotr Bielecki and I'm the technical lead of the PyTorch team at NVIDIA. Today I have the opportunity to welcome you to this event and to talk a little bit about my personal journey to PyTorch. First of all, I will be talking about this whole event and how we can make the best out of it. This will be followed by my journey to PyTorch with my working experience um, with the community where I'm seeing PyTorch right now and um, what the future of the framework might look like. The Ecosystem Day. The Ecosystem Day is a good way for the community to shape the future of PyTorch together. Um, the Ecosystem Day gives you the opportunity to, for example, discuss core technical development of the framework, new ideas and the future roadmap of it. Furthermore, it's a very good way to connect with all the maintainers and stakeholders of the framework. Um, we will have a couple of talks like this at the beginning, which will be followed by a virtual poster session. Since I've been reviewing these posters and had um, the chance to peek a little bit into these submissions, I would highly recommend to um, visit this session and to chat about them. Um, from my personal point of view, I'm mostly looking forward to meeting a lot of community members I might have interacted with in the past in one way or the other. My journey to PyTorch. So in 2017, I was working as a research scientist um, in the deep learning, machine learning uh, field. And back then I was using a lot of different machine learning frameworks such as Theano and Torch7. When PyTorch 0.2 was released, I really liked its NumPy-like API and its flexibility. It felt really natural to me and fit perfectly into my way of thinking and um, workflow. So that is why I completely switched um, to the framework back then. And at one point I was working on a specific segmentation use case with a custom loss function and I wanted just to double check that my code is really um, working as I wanted to do. So that is that was the point when I created my very first um, thread in the forum and a little bit later Sumit um, confirmed that my code is indeed working correctly. So then I thought, oh wow, the forum seems to be a really good place uh, to learn more about the framework. And so I started to look into more um, forum posts and more solutions whenever I got stuck with a specific issue. And uh, the more familiar I was with the framework, the more I started to help new users, especially to get started um, in using the framework. And once I was more familiar with the framework, I, I decided to start contributing to it. So um, at one point I was looking into the torch.split function, which was back then missing um, a more flexible way to specify the sizes. So I started with a feature request and uh, started to work on it. And, and yeah, back then I wasn't really familiar with working on this huge code base. And um, my very first merge request was failing with a lot of linting issues. The rebasing wasn't working correctly, but I was really lucky that the PyTorch community is so supportive and has helped me to um, fix these things so that this particular feature um, was then finished by me. And from my perspective, I think this might have been one of the key moments where I decided to um, focus more on the work on the framework itself, uh, which then led me um, to finally join um, in 2019 NVIDIA as a PyTorch dev, and um, where we are now supporting a huge PyTorch user base from, for example, internal as well as, as, well as external um, PyTorch users. Since then, I'm still using heavily the forum as it gives you a very good feedback loop of, um, for example, what new users are struggling with, where new research direction um, are heading to, and what the limiting factors of the framework uh, might be at the moment. Um, so we are using this kind of feedback uh, to, for example, Suraj is now working on this um, on this specific FAQ section in the forum, or um, Shimon has been working on the, for example, PyTorch performance tuning guide. And um, since I've joined 
the forum, I'm still fascinated by um, the whole knowledge of the user base as well as how welcoming um, the whole community is. I think once you're fam more familiar with the framework, it is it might be simple to forget what kind of struggles new users might have and using the framework uh, and getting started with the framework. So I'm really happy to see how supportive the community is, uh, still is. And right now I have a little bit more than 20,000 forum posts and I'm still learning, um, learning a lot in the forum. Where I'm seeing PyTouch now? So PyTouch started as a niche research framework and is getting more and more features, more and more um, utilities. And a lot of things have happened since, since PyTorch started. So for example, Chainer has, been, has merged into the framework. We have a lot of, um, lot of domain-specific libraries such as Hugging Face for natural language processing, Monai for medical work uh, cases, or for example, PyTorch Geometric. We have multiple high-level APIs um, we have touch script with multiple backends, which can be used to few specific operations if possible, speed up your scripted models. We have touch serving mobile backends, which are more focused on the PyTorch deployment use cases. Um, more users in the forum, more users working on the framework, uh, framework directly from a lot of different teams. The forum has right now more or less 3 million visitors per month. So um, you can see that there are a lot of new features and a lot of moving parts, um, which then basically leads me to the next point, which is where are we going from here? So from my perspective, the uh, three major points why PyTorch is successful is because of its flexibility, the performance, and the community. So um, the flexibility allows users to work on whatever kind of experiment they want. The framework should not be the limiting factor in your research idea. Um, while the flexibility is needed, it is necessary for the framework to be as fast as possible as well. Combining these two points is not a simple task and the usability shouldn't suffer from it. And these fast moving parts and all these new functionality and utilities, it's really not that easy to keep up with, which is then um, why the third point is you, the community. So um, you have been giving very valid feedback in the past and are still doing it, which is why we are we are basically all here today to um, shape the future of the framework together. So this leads me to a specific quote I would like uh, to mention from Tom, where he says that he came for PyTorch, the library, and stayed for the company. Um, while this is certainly the case for me, I really hope it is uh, the same for at least some of you. So with that being said, thank you very much for joining again. Have fun and enjoy the day. Um, meet the complete PyTorch team at NVIDIA as well as the whole PyTorch community. Yeah.